Okay, let's get going here. I got a little bell now, and I'm going to ring this little bell to signify that class is starting. Yeah. All right, let's get some lights on and see what's set up. I know Mr. Bean was going to try to get everything set up, but he was also visiting with our new friend that's a part of the workshop now, Herr Obermeister, Mr. Obermeister. And Mr. Obermeister is from Germany, so he's really an expert on the Foff machine, so thought we would invite him to be a part of this premiere today. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, there's, there's Herr Obermeister right there, down at the bottom. Yeah, how you doing? How you doing, Herr Obermeister? The gates, ganz gut. Was ist los? Oh, ich verstehe. So, what Herr Obermeister just told me? Let me turn our polka music down real quick. So Herr Obermeister told me that he tried to offer to help Mr. Bean get things set up for this uh, premiere on Mary Rowan's uh, Foff 339, uh, her Dry Hundred Non and Dry Sig Machina, uh, but Mr. Bean would not let him get involved. Matter of fact, he kind of told him to go away. And uh, Herr Obermeister is concerned a little bit that Mr. Bean maybe didn't get it right. So we'll see. And, and I totally get it, Herr Obermeister. So let's, let's go ahead and remove this partition and just see kind of what's going on. And this is our second attempt at this premiere. As some of you may know, uh, the pre-video that I shot of the first premiere for this FOF 339 that belongs to Mary Rowan out of the great state of Kentucky, somehow the file got corrupted and I was on the phone for hours with uh, YouTube trying to figure things out and they finally told me there's nothing we can do, you're just going to have to delete the file and try it again. Well that was hours and hours and hours of work so I was really bummed out but we don't give up here at the workshop, we just jump back in and give it another try and that's kind of what we're doing in this premiere plus we have Herr Obermeister here as well which is really cool so let's move the partition and we'll see how Mr. Bean did okay hey Mr. Bean how's it going let me move this uh, partition over here out of the way and it looks like you've got Mary's machine still in the case. Which, okay. I mean, that's not a big deal. I can get things plugged in and set up and everything. Oh, and you've got your sewing machine out too, your hand crank. How cool is that? Yeah, I, I, I know you want to be an assistant like Dr. Singer. I, I know it. And you're very experienced on your machine. And you even bronzed your machine to show how serious you are about vintage sewing machines. And you have your own sewing table. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, I would dance too. I mean, I mean, you, you should be really proud of that. You really should be. And you're getting closer and closer and closer. The last premiere you did, I think it was on uh, Debbie Gavin's uh, Foff machine. And you had set up the light display and everything. And... Everything was really fantastic. So, you know, I think there's possibilities here. I'm not going to commit to it yet, but you're taking all the right steps forward to uh, become an assistant like Dr. Singer. And now we have as a resource in the workshop, Herr Obermeister down here. And, uh, you know, I really want you to be welcoming to him. He, he, he said he tried to help with the setup of the FOF 339 that belongs to Mary Robin that we're, Rowan that we're premiering today, and, and you kind of shoved him out of the way. So let, let's not do that. That's not the way we operate here. We all pitch in. We all jump in together uh, to make a difference in our classroom for all the folks around the world that follow what we do here. So uh, can you be a team player, Mr. Bean? Okay, cool. 
All right. So I'm going to move you and uh, Herr Obermeister to the side along with your sewing machine, Mr. Bean. And uh, we will get things set up quickly so that uh, we can uh, begin this premiere and showing them Mary's uh, machine and what it's able to do. And I'll put Herr Obermeister right over by you. And I'll put your machine right over there. I don't think this is a 12K um, like the one we just gave away. But it is a really a really cool machine, Mr. Bean. It's very, very cool. And you may not know this, Mr. Bean, but this machine actually came from the great state of Mississippi. Uh, a real nice lady down there, we did a machine for her, sent this up here as a gift, which I thought was way cool. All right, so let me put on some more polka music, and uh, we will get this case open and get a clear look at Mary's Foff 339. Yeah, yes, Herr, Herr Obermeister, I know you know what that means. Mr. Bean might not know where it mean, what it means because in some of his movies he spoke Spanish, but I never heard him speak German. So yeah, 339 is 339, which is what this machine is, uh, a Foff Model 339. Not seldom, uh, you don't see it very often. It's it's fairly rare, and uh, especially one in this quality. I mean, it's it's literally museum quality. And uh, I know Mary's very excited to get it out there in the great state of Kentucky. I think she and her family are from a place called Ekron, Ekron, Kentucky. And if someone wants to Google that real quick during this premiere, Ekron, uh, Kentucky. Ekron is spelled E-K-R-O-N. Uh, if you type something really interesting about Ekron, Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma, what am I saying, goodness gravy? Wrong state, Scott, wrong state. Ekron, Kentucky. Don't type in Oklahoma, although there may be an Ekron, Oklahoma. You never know. So again, if you type in um, Ekron, Kentucky, into Google and find some really interesting fact and post it during this premiere. Not just something mundane like population or geographical blah blah blah, but type in something interesting about Ekron, Kentucky and uh, I'll send you something special if you're the first one to do it. Okay? So, alright, some polka music and let's get this case open and get Mary's machine set up. Okay, so that first one I played for you, if uh, if I didn't mention it, which I, I know I didn't, is called Manic Polka. And the next one is called uh, Glee Club Polka. So there, maybe there will be some singers in this. I have no idea. Oh, we've done this one before. This is the one that sounds like we're down on the border of Mexico. Doesn't it? That's okay. Mr. Bean, as you remember from some of his movies, he knows how to say gracias. He does. All right, so let's get this opened up, and we'll get this Foff 339 set up that belongs to Mary Rowan. Okay, what's the joke? That is not Mary's Foff 339. There's no way. Uh-uh. What did you do, Mr. Bean? Come on, come on out here. Come on out here. What? I know you're proud of getting everything set up and getting the case out, but this is not Mary's machine. That's Mary's case. That's definitely Mary's case, but you can't just put a sticky note on a sewing machine and declare that it's a Foff 339. This is a Foff for sure. I think it's a 229, but it's not Mary's machine, Mr. Bean. Okay, if you had trouble finding it, then you could have asked for help from Dr. Singer or Herr Obermeister or from, from me. I would have, by all means, helped you find Mary's machine, but yeah, this is, uh, no, this is not the machine. Case, yes. Uh, machine, no. So let's get this out of the way 
and I will see if I can find Mary's machine real quick, get it set up so we can continue with this premiere. Ah, oh, Mr. Bean, you were you were moving forward towards becoming an assistant with the last time you set up Debbie Gaiman's machine and you had the light display and you had this machine on the workbench to show how much better the LED lighting was, blah, blah, blah. And now this, it's a setback, Mr. Bean. I'm sorry, it's a setback. It's a setback, you can't, this is, ugh, okay. So let's, let's put you back by here, Obermeister. Okay, and thankfully we've got some really good music on when I do this transition. So first of all, I'm gonna take this 229, this Foff Machina, out of Mary's case, and move it off to the side somewhere. Okay. It's so hard to find good help. It's so hard to find good help. I mean, I was very fortunate to find Hans and Bill, but they're not here. Bill is down in Florida. Hans is over in Norway. If they had set this up, I, I know that they would have gotten it right. And I want to I want to keep my voice down because I don't want to hurt Mr. Bean's feelings because he tried so hard. But come on, come on. Ugh. Okay, let's get this case out of the way. Well, I hope all of you have seen on Facebook uh, the pictures that I posted of Mary's machine and some off-camera sew-offs that I did. We're going to be doing a lot of on-camera sew-offs today. Hold on just a second. got to see if I can find her machine. I think Herr Obermeister might have moved it. So let's put on Old Berlin while we're looking for Mary's machine. Hold on a second. Mary's machine. Ah, okay. They moved it over here and put it on the table to the right. That's not a good place for it. All right, let me bring it over here on camera. Hold on a second. is a Foff 339 in Germany when you're saying a number that has hundreds positions you say the first number which is three or dry and then you switch the last two numbers around instead of saying dry hundred dry anointing which would be incorrect that would be 393 you say dry hundred noin and dry sig, which is switching the last two numbers. You say them in reverse. So this is a Foff dry hundred noin and dry sig, which is made in obviously Western Germany. And if you saw the pictures on Facebook, you'll see the cleated belts and all the other incredible uh, Foff engineering that you've come to expect from uh, this machine maker. Isn't that a beauty? Just fabulous. I feel compelled to wipe it off, even though I haven't done anything other than just carried it over to the workbench from where somebody moved it. Oh, I have to grab something else too. It's part of my part of my setup, my presentation. Hold on a second. Thank you for everybody's patience, again, as there was a technical issue with the pre-video that I had already shot 
of uh, introducing Mary's machine, and uh, I had to postpone. I've never, in my knowledge, to my knowledge, I've never had to postpone a premiere before. But in this instance, I did because the video that I that I shot that I planned on showing as an introduction for the premiere uh, got messed up. It got corrupted, and uh, all the YouTube experts looked at the situation and just said, there, "Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do." And uh, so here we are. Take two of Mary, Mary Rowan's uh, FOF 339. So hopefully everything goes smooth this time. And uh, we have no issue with, uh, well, if you're watching this, we have no issue. Duh. So, <laughs> oh, I'm so rattled by this. It's never happened in all the years that I've been on YouTube. So, all right. So another polka song. We'll play in a little bit, but first of all, I want to start launching into Mary's Machine. And Mr. Bean and, and Herr Obermeister, you, you guys did fine. Well, okay, Herr Obermeister, I hear you loud and clear. He kicked you out. You really didn't help at all. You wanted to help. But at any rate, guys, great job. We're, we're, we're moving forward. We're moving forward. Always moving forward, right? Okay. So the first thing I'll show you is that uh, Mary's Machine... Uh, came even though it was made for the American market, it came with an uh, an original made in Germany 15 watt incandescent bulb. I'm going to see if I can show it to you on camera. Hopefully you can kind of see that. Made in Germany, 15 watts, and I think it says what 120 volts. Something like that. Let me let me see. 110 volts, 110 volts. So I just thought it was really cool when I when I saw this bulb was in the uh, FOF 339. Again, this machine came from my personal collection from the original owner. Uh, it came out of Illinois, and I'm not going to say go Bears, so don't even go there. Uh, but when I when I pull this machine out to to begin to finalize it for Mary. It was like, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That's so cool. It's a German-engineered ball, but it was engineered to be in an American machine. Because if this were a German bulb that was engineered to be in a German machine, say 220, 240 volt, when you would plug it into an American-type outlet, the bulb would come on, It would, it, but it would be very, very dim. And that question has come up for Hans and Bill and myself numerous times. When you get a machine, let's say that that machine has been wired for the European market. So it's been wired. It has a 220-240 motor. It's got all the wiring set up for working uh, over there in Europe. Do you need a converter to plug it into uh, an American outlet? The answer is absolutely not. As a matter of fact, it will actually cause the converter... And it'll cause the uh, uh, potentially the convert uh, the the machine to start to overheat because the converter is designed to reduce voltage. If you're say using Mary's machine over in Europe, which is wired and set up for 110, 125 type volts, uh, you have to plug it into a converter uh, before you operate it in a European marketplace uh, because otherwise. If you just put an adapter onto the plug for Mary's machine and you plug it into an outlet over in Europe somewhere where the voltage is almost two times what we have here, it's going to fry her machine. It's going to destroy it. So if you have a machine that's wired for the European market uh, and you want to plug it into an outlet with an adapter in the U.S., no problem. The light will be dim. The motor will run much slower but you do not and should not use a converter. And I know that there are some companies out there trying to use uh, very clever marketing to talk about inverters, which is, is designed to increase voltage. If you've ever bought one for your car, you can have an inverter that plugs, say, into the cigarette lighter, and then you can plug something that's 110, 120 into the plug-in point off of that uh, inverter, and you can operate it just like you're at home, which is really cool. 
As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, I demonstrated a, a much larger inverter in one of the premieres a number of months ago when I was down by the Bay of Green Bay and I had that table set up. Remember that? And I think I had three sewing machines on there all plugged into that same inverter that was connected to my car battery. And I showed that you could literally run all three of those machines full power off of an inverter like that. So inverters are pretty amazing. But the technology has not been perfected yet where you can take an inverter as they're promoting online all over the place and you can supposedly plug it into an American outlet and all of a sudden you're going to have 220, 240 voltage. It's not proven and I don't recommend it until they do perfect it, if they can perfect it. Because in order to do that, it's drawing such a high load of 110, 125 voltage out of that outlet, it can actually be a fire hazard. So if you have a German machine that has a German bulb, this is wired for an American market uh, again, but if you have a German machine, plug it in or hire a licensed electrician to set up an outlet that's dedicated similar to the one that your dryer would be set up on that's going to supply safe and reliable European type voltage for a European wired engineered motor. And to answer another question I've gotten multiple times, can you convert uh, a 220 motor over to 110. It depends on the motor. Some motors have the capacity to be dual voltage. Other motors do not, and it's unsafe to try. The same thing is true if you were trying to convert a motor that's 110 to 220, 240. There's a lot of very careful design and planning that has to go into something like that and the equipment that you're working with that motor that lighting system whatever has to have the capacity to do it not all of them do okay so i just wanted to bring that up because that's come up multiple times uh in questions that come to uh hans and bill and i uh through the facebook uh messenger system so so yeah d just be real careful whenever you're dealing with electricity that's why when i present different things that relate to electricity uh, wiring uh, plugs and other things like that I always have a disclaimer and say if you're not comfortable doing it uh, if you don't feel competent to do it and it's okay to say you're not competent to do it that's why we have licensed electricians then take it to an approved location or send it here to the workshop and I'll take care of it for you okay blah 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 so anyway the whole purpose in showing you this bulb is I was pleased to see that uh, the FOF 339 is capable of supporting my new LED light. So I took this one out. I'm going to send it with the machine to Mary so she'll have it. Because I just think I think it's cool because they made it in Germany for a machine coming to uh, America. Uh, but these LED lights, they're just really hard to beat. Nice and bright. No heat factor, especially when you're in the summertime and you're in your sewing room if it's a smaller sewing room and that light is just kicking out tons of heat you almost feel like you're in an easy bake oven and you're waiting for the bell to ding so that you're done cooking and you can be done with it so uh but let me set let me set mary's bulb to the side and uh, you might have noticed to the to the left i have one of the green machine husqvarna Viking extension beds and you might be saying to yourself well gosh what's that all about why why are we looking at a Swedish extension bed designed for one of the green machines when we're talking about a western uh, Germany engineered FOF 399 machina why Varum Varum is why in German it's because I wanted to highlight the fact that Mary's uh, FOF 339 actually has more workspace than even the very coveted and cherished and nearly worshipped uh, green machine uh, style sewing machine. You know, whether it's a, a 21A, a 21E, a 19 Special, whatever it is, we always look at those extension beds. And I've even made it a point of highlighting that in other uh, premieres where I'll have it next to one of the more contemporary uh, you know, long bed, long bed type quilter machines, and we look at them side by side, and it's like, wow, how how can you even compete with a Husqvarna Viking extension bed? Well, until now, it's been really tough, but when I show you comparatively 
the extension workspace between Mary's 339 and a Husqvarna Viking extension bed, and I'll line it up right on the end of the free arm, just like it were connected to the machine, you're going to be like, holy moly, I wish I had jumped on the opportunity of buying this machine, but I waited too long, and that gal from Kentucky beat me to it. And if you said something like that, you wouldn't be alone. I can't tell you how many phone calls, emails, and all kinds of other contacts from people I got after uh, this machine was introduced as for sale uh, a month or so ago. And uh, Mary jumped on it right away, and, and a number of people contacted me from all over the place, Canada, Germany, England. Um, I think I even got a contact from, uh, from the Netherlands. And someone was asking, you know, each of these people were asking about, is the machine still available? Uh, no, it's not. It's taken. It's, uh, it's, it's spoken for. So uh, you missed out. So again, when I present a machine for sale, typically they're gone quick. So if you see something you like, jump on it quick like Mary did, and then you won't be bummed out. So let me see if I can put on a little bit more music. It's so doggone quiet. So what is this? This is called Jeremio, Jeremio Polka or something like that. Actually, I missed a couple. I'm sorry. Let's do four. Let's do fair. Four bears polka first. Four bears polka. All right, I'll turn this way down. So what I want you to see is I want you to see the comparison between the workspace. Again, I'm going to do my very best to line up this Husqvarna Viking uh, extension bed. I'm lining it up in relation to the end of the free arm right here. Uh, where you know just to the left of the throat plate so I'm lining it up as if it were on the machine and if you look to if you look to the left of it over here you can see that the extension space on Mary's machine in comparison to this Husqvarna Viking green machine extension bed is probably a good three to four inches longer three to four inches longer is the amount of workspace you have with this 339 compared to one of the Swedish beauties. That's crazy ridiculous. And I will point out that the normal extension bed of this 339 comes from here to right here, but then they have this additional piece that you can attach to it, which I've done, to give yourself that additional extension uh, on the workspace. And again, it adds another probably four inches to the overall workspace of this 339. So we've always looked in absolute wonder at these Swedish Beauty extension beds like this. And with good reason. We should. They're, they're absolutely fabulous. But we have a new champion on the scene now with Mary Rowan's Foff 339 with an extension space that is about four inches larger in length than this baby right here. So all I can say is the Germans are very, very smart. Very smart. And even in the, in the design of this machine, as you look at it, they're very smart. This machine, as you'll see when we look at some of the Providence materials, would have been purchased by the original owner that I got it from back in around 1961. And in that time period, the, the latter part of the 50s going into the 60s, there was a huge boom of competition among the major world makers of sewing machines. You know, Necky was out there, as I highlighted, highlighted in that recent premiere with Debbie's Supernova, and they were driving the impression of everybody with, uh, you, you know, making that machine look sexy and curvaceous and just have beautiful lines and be a pleasure to look at. Foff had never thought that direction, really. As you look at that machine that Mr. Bean set up uh, with his sticky note, uh, labeling it as Mary's machine, that 229, that type of machine is indicative of the design features of most of the Foff machines of that 1950-plus period. They were just real plain-looking. They were flat. They were... There was nothing super sexy about them at all. They were workhorses. They were wonderful. We love them. But they just didn't have that sexy, contemporary, 
gorgeous, oh my gosh, look at that gorgeous machine look. Not many people would say that. As a matter of fact, in one of my premieres many years ago, I said, uh, you know, basically here's, here's a, uh, how did I say it? How did I say it? Here's a, uh, uh, you know, das, das Maschine is sehr wirksam, but nicht sehr schön. And that's my rough way of saying in German, th that machine that I was introducing at the time, I think it was probably a FOF 332. I was saying it's it's very strong. Sehr wirksam is it's able to get work done. It's very strong, very powerful, but it's not it's not sehr schön. It's not pretty. Well, back in the latter 1950s, 1960s, FOF started spinning their wheels about this and saying. We need to, if we're going to compete against the neckies that are making these sexy machines and, um, you know, all the other machines that were rolling out, I mean, we had the Slantomatic series machines that had just incredible sexy lines to them. And all the makers were leaning that direction of saying, we want to make a strong, competent machine, but we want to make it look... That was my weak attempt to whistle. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, but we want to make them pretty, too. Well, finally, with this model, the 339, they captured all of the best of what FOF is. They have an incredibly strong machine, a motor that is very, very comparable to the 332 or the 130 uh, or the 130-6. It's a very meaty motor. But they also put that sexy into the machine, drop-dead gorgeous. I mean, you can just take a look at this machine and go, wow, as most of you did when you saw the pictures uh, of me introducing Mar Mary's machine and taking a lot of detailed pictures of it, along with some off-camera sew-offs, and everybody was like, oh my gosh, that is so absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. Never in all the years that I introduced the other traditional FOF machines did anyone typically say that. They, they would say things like, oh, what an incredible workhorse, or what an incredibly powerful machine, or that thing can sew through anything. But they, they never said, wow, gorgeous, drop-dead, sexy, beautiful, blah, blah, blah. They definitely did about Mary's machine. And it's because Fall finally got the message. They were like, okay, we get it, we get it. We're going to make a machine that has those incredible cleated belts, as I showed in the Facebook shots. But we're also going to make a machine that can compete in the marketplace against the Neckies, against the Singers, against the Elnas, and any of the other makers that made machines that had better lines and looked sexier. So there you go. Not only that, they really made a huge improvement on the workspace with that extension piece on the end that even surpasses what the Swedish beauties can offer with uh, their extension beds, which are, are world-renowned. I mean, they're amazing. So what I want to dr uh, draw into the... Uh, the shot right now is some of the incredible Providence material that came with Mary's machine when I bought it from the original owner. And to be specific, I bought it from the daughter of the original owner. The story as the family shared it with me, and again, they this machine came from Illinois. Uh, the family, to my knowledge, still lives in Illinois, and that's where I had to go to get this machine a number of years ago. But uh, they shared the story of this being a Christmas gift. It was a Christmas gift for the mother of the family. And uh, it was especially given to her as a special gift because her health had really been kind of up and down and all over the place. And sadly, um, after this was presented to her, the Christmas of 1961, her health very rapidly started to decline. And the daughter told me that her mother was only able to sew on this machine maybe, and this is on the long end of things, maybe 10 hours. So that's why this machine, you know, it's basically, it's brand new. It's basically brand spanking new. It's got about 10 hours of sewing time on it. And when I went through it for my finalization process, I felt almost like I was not doing justice because it was like, okay, normally I have to, wait, I don't have to do that. There's, there's, there's no need to do that. Well, what about this area? No, that's perfect too. So I did go from Bob and the Balance Wheel on Mary's FOF 339, but I'll tell you one thing. This was this was like it literally just come out of the factory in Germany. It was that perfect. Well, you could see that through the camera. 
not just on the outside but on the inside as well is what I'm trying to make a point of. So let me pull some of this Providence stuff out, which I think is just absolutely fascinating and cool. And I'll try to set this up so you can um, just see the scope of what Mary, what's going with Mary's machine. Uh, let's do this. Let's turn this over that way. I didn't plan this, by the way, as usual. <laughs> okay, so that's A, B, C. That's D. So I'm assuming E is in the machine. So before we start doing sew-offs with the cams, I'm going to have to pull E out. Because I'd like to go A, B, C, D, E in order, just so you can see them in order. Now this is the, uh, the Christmas card that came from the uh, sewing center down in Illinois that uh, the uh, husband was going to present with the machine and then things started to deteriorate very rapidly and never got filled out. So I don't know if maybe uh, Mary's family out in the great state of Kentucky are going to say to Mary, hey, we saw the premiere. You made us watch the premiere about that Scott guy from Wisconsin, and he showed us the Christmas card that went with this machine originally when the owner bought it in Illinois back in 1961. So since it hasn't been officially given, see, it's blank, it hasn't been officially been given as a Christmas gift, then we're going to fill it out as the family, and you're going to have to wait until Christmas of this year, 2020, to sit down to this machine and actually use it. Why can I hear Mary shouting right now on the other side of the camera in Kentucky, loud enough for everyone around the world? It's like the shot heard around the world. <clears throat> I hear her yelling, that is not a good idea. That is not going to fly. <laughs> I totally get it. I totally get it. So let me put this Christmas card over here. Uh, on the end, and then we have an original uh, FOF 339 manual as well that's going to go with Mary's machine. It, again, it was something that the uh, owner obviously got with the machine when they bought it uh, brand new down in Illinois. And then we have this right here, which I think this is super cool. It is uh, basically a certificate of lifetime, lifetime guarantee. It's the registration card. And then the notice of change of address. They, you know, they, they're very organized. Germans are very organized, if you didn't know that. Having lived in Germany myself for three years, I can tell you they are very organized, very much bump, 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 bump. There's a way to do things, and you do it right, and you don't do it any other way. So they even have a change of address that's built into this little package as well. But the card itself, and you can kind of see the serial number kind of showing through there, the card itself is what really impressed me. Uh, when I got it from these folks uh, down in Illinois. It's got an incredible statement written in here that I'm actually going to read to you. I'll do my best to read it. Uh, and then on top it has the original owner's name written in, uh, Robert. Robert was the husband that bought this for his wife on December 22nd, 1961. So I am going to read this to you. I'm going to set this, uh, the outside jacket card over here because I just, I love red including this guarantee card that I hung on Mary's machine as well, which is just absolutely drop-dead gorgeous and cool. So let me read what, what is written in this Certificate of Lifetime Guarantee. I think it's, it's pretty awesome. I really do. Especially in today's disposable market, um, I think it's really, really awesome. So here's what they say. The Foff sewing machine, serial number 130024, purchased by Robert, and then it's his last name, on December 22nd, 1961, is guaranteed to be free from any defects in material and workmanship and is guaranteed to endure the natural wear incident to family use, provided it is given reasonable care in accordance with the book of instructions which accompanies the machine. Any part of the above Foff machine sewing machine found defective will be replaced free of charge without time limit except parts which normally require replacement such as needles, needle plate, needle threader, hook and base, bobbins, bobbin case attachments, blah blah blah. 
and then it, it goes into more of the details of the guarantee in relating to electrical stuff. And then in the very bottom it says, this certificate of guarantee is issued and extended only to the above named original purchaser and will become uh, valid upon return receipt of attached registration card completely filled out, signed by an authorized FOF dealer and mailed at the time of purchase. So the FOF guarantee of lifetime unfortunately is not transferable it says right down there with the underlining uh, it you know if, if it goes to another person it doesn't continue so but still to the original owner that bought it it's phenomenal it's phenomenal and Mary has a limited lifetime warranty from this workshop for the machine uh, that's on camera right now so even though FOF didn't go to the finish line I'm going to go to the finish line for Mary and any customer that purchases a machine uh, from me. I always stand behind my, behind my work and behind the machines. So let me set these out here just because I think they're super awesome. And now we have an accessory box as well that has just a wide variety, and I'll kind of zoom in on this. It has a wide variety of different goodies. Here, let me put the lid under the back so it tilts towards the camera just a little bit. That'll make it a little bit easier, at least in theory, that'll make it a little bit easier to see. And hopefully it doesn't slide off the table and crash to the floor, because that would be not cool on a live premiere. So I will zoom in on that quickly, so we can take a look at it. So, original FOF uh, oiling uh, bottle, which is super cool. A variety of different uh, screwdrivers that might be needed. Attachments. Uh, Bobbins galore, lots of bobbins, and there's probably some other goodies in there as well that I'm forgetting. But uh, this is all original from Robert that bought this machine for his wife that sadly her health declined and she wasn't able to enjoy it uh, to the fullest. I mean, 10 hours is hardly even breaking the machine in. That would be like buying a new car and driving it 100 miles. And I mean, it's still a brand new car. It is. And this is neat too. Uh, I had this hanging on the machine just because I think it's super awesome. And uh, let's spin my screen around. I just love the gold, kind of the gold leaf accent around here. I mean, FOF is just classy. They're a very classy operation. And this has some of the similar language in there, but it's got some additional language in it as well. And this would have been hanging on this machine in all likelihood down in Illinois where Robert bought this for his wife in the Christmas of 61. Uh, and I can only imagine as he looked at this machine on the showroom floor and saw this hanging on it and just how they had it presented, uh, he probably, even as a non-sewer, just immediately fell in love with it and said, my wife is going to go nuts over this machine. And I'm sure she did, even in the short amount of time that she enjoyed it. And now it's going to go to the great state of Kentucky and I know be cherished by Mary Rowan uh, as she falls in love with this incredible machine and uh, just begins to carry on that legacy of Robert's wife and, and really, really make use of a, a machine that was made to bring so much pleasure and enjoyment to the owner. Okay, so this one inside of this little thing that was hanging on the machine it says guarantee for the FOF sewing machine, and then uh, it goes into here, GM FOF sewing machine factory, Kaiser, Kaiser Slot in Germany, which is not tor terribly far from where I was uh, in Hanau, Germany, for those three years. And I'm just going to read a portion of this. But what it says is made by skilled craftsmen and from the finest materials available, all competent parts, oh, I'm competent, all component parts <laughs> used in the aforementioned sewing machine have passed final inspection before the machine was shipped out of the factory. That kind of sounds like the workshop, doesn't it, with my finalization process? Nothing leaves this workshop, nothing leaves this factory until it's been thoroughly inspected and approved and passed all of the rigorous tests that it, it had to pass to be able to, send, to, to be sent out to that sewing center in Chicago where Robert eventually bought it for his wife. And it's just another guarantee of FOP because they stand, they stand behind their product and they believe in it. And why wouldn't they? They're made absolutely to perfection. So all of this Providence material 
is something that's going to be sent, obviously, when I ship this machine out to Kentucky to Mary Rowan, and then she'll be able to uh, keep this in a safe place and, 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 and cer certainly revisit it periodically just because I think it's just, it's just fun to go back and to look at it again and read some of the stuff that's in here uh, and just, again, just celebrate uh, the wonder of this machine. And uh, I'm going to start to move this stuff off to the side, well out of the way. Oh, and I, so, I should also show you real quick, not that it's super extraordinary, but uh, this happened to be with this machine as well, so I'm going to be sending it to Mary. It's an old pattern, it looks like, for an apron that maybe at some point uh, uh, Robert's wife was going to make it, or maybe she did make, maybe that 10 hours she did make one of these aprons, I don't know. But uh, this was with the machine, and uh, it's going to go with the machine uh, when it heads to Kentucky. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing I'm going to try to launch into, and again, this, uh, this 339 has a total of five cams that go with the machine. And these are interesting cams because, as I highlighted in that other premiere uh, with Debbie's machine, <coughs> the Necky uh, sewing machines, <coughs> excuse me, the Necky sewing machines are fabulous Italian engineering wonders. But uh, again, any machine has shortcomings. I highlighted in Debbie's premiere, and I don't want to go too much off track here, but, you know, the lighting system is not so great on the Supernova, and also the cam system setup that they have is very complicated and very confusing. As you look on the internet, there's a lot of confused people about how do we build these cams, how do we, you know, what, what faces which, I've already covered this. And then Singer has these cams like this, that have the uh, embossed image of the stitch output. You pop them in, easy to go. You know, it's it's not difficult at all. It's a very easy machine for a beginning sewer to uh, to use uh, because you just pop them in. You make a couple of quick settings. Boom, you're off to the races. Uh, and while this is really awesome, Mary's machine is a step beyond that, in my opinion, at least. These are easy to insert cams these five cams that come with this 339, but each of these cams is basically a cam within a cam. And by that I mean, for example, this cam A that I'm holding here. There's a stitch pattern on one side, there's a stitch pattern on the other side, and once you insert this cam, which I'll show you how to do, all you need to do is make a quick dial adjustment on the machine and that cam doesn't have to be turned, it doesn't have, you don't have to do a thing with the cam and this machine is able to read side one and then side two without doing anything at all to the cam once it's been inserted into the machine so basically it's almost the equivalent of the innovation and this is dating me a bit but it's almost like the innovation of when they went to eight track tapes and then eventually to CDs and other things like that where you could enjoy music on both sides basically without having to do anything to that uh, you know to that um, you know eight track tape or any of those other things that would be able to play music it it's an innovation here in this FOF 339 which I think is phenomenal where once you put that cam in if you want to sew both patterns on it you simply make a quick adjustment on the machine as I'll show you and boom you're able to sew that and then changing the cams out, very, very easy. Very easy. Uh, you just have to you know what you're doing. And I'll, I'll teach that to you today. So I'm going to move the rest of these cams now uh, off to the side. And actually, we'll do a straight stitch first on this machine, just so I can prove that the FOF 339 can sew a straight stitch. Just like a Necky Supernova can sew a straight stitch. And if Debbie Gavin is watching this, she knows why I'm kind of jabbing her a little bit. I'll just leave it at that. So, uh, what should we do a straight stitch on to launch into this? I could do a straight stitch and then a zigzag, maybe. 
Why don't we do it on, let's see here. Yeah, I could do that. I hadn't really planned to do that. I have this new uh, canvas material that I found. And uh, it's not U.S. Army grade canvas, but it is, it, when you feel it with your hands, as uh, Mary will have a chance to do, because I'll send all these sew-offs with this uh, FOF 339 when it goes to Kentucky. But uh, this stuff is, I mean, it should be Army, U.S. Army approved type canvas because it is super, super heavy duty. It is, it's intense. Uh, I'm kind of trying to show that here and I'm not doing a very good job of it. You can just see the texture of that stuff is just intense. Intense! But uh, before we actually do the saw off, let me just walk you briefly around the machine, if that's okay. And I have to do one other thing as well. I just remembered because there's something I want to explain and I need Google's help to do it. I need Google's help to do it. And hopefully I can find it quickly enough because I didn't plan this. After having the first uh, premiere video get corrupted and crash and burn and now I'm scrambling to try to redo this, I don't have everything exactly lined up in a German way, so my apologies. Let's see here. <clears throat> Forward. Mm -hmm. German. Oh, good. Good. It did come up. It came up straight away. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to show you on uh, Mary's machine... <clears throat> is uh, the stitch length control, which is this area right over here. And uh, you can see it's basically split into two regions. You've got right in the center, and I'll get closer to it so you can see it more easily. Right in the center, at the center point, you've got a zero, which means as you move away from the zero towards the top, and you can see right now the, uh, the lever is at the highest position. At the highest position on this stitch length controller, you're going to get the longest stitch, which is going to be probably pretty close to five to six stitches per inch. As you move the lever down from the top towards that zero in the middle, you're going to shorten that stitch up. Let me stop moving the camera. You're going to shorten that stitch up just above the zero to pretty close to 25 to 30 stitches per inch. So it's going to have a comparable stitch length range as a number of the machines have, around five on the, on the high end, five stitches per inch, all the way down to 30 stitches per inch when you get real close to that zero. And again, like any machine, if you get too close to the zero, the machine material is hardly going to be moving. You're going to have probably a mess down at the needle if you try to shorten it too much. So uh, just be mindful of that if you uh, happen to own a machine like this. But the thing we notice about this stitch length controller is we have a V on top. Okay, that makes no sense. Okay, now we're making sense, and we have an R on the bottom. So I'm assuming that when you go below that zero and you move downward, that you're going to be sewing in reverse. And if you go all the way down to that R on the very bottom, you're going to be sewing in reverse with the largest uh, stitch that the machine can do, which is, again, about five to six stitches per inch. So the R, okay, we get that. Reverse. This machine was made to come to America. It was engineered for the uh, American market. So the R, we get it. It makes sense. But what about this V thing? What is that about? Well, when you start to look at the German language, initially it doesn't make much sense at all because forward in German, and I'll try to come out in this shot a little bit so you can see it on my phone. Forward in German, and I'll actually play it for you. Nach vorne. If you can hear that or not. Nach vorne. Nach vorne is forward. 
That's the proper way of saying forward in German. Nach vorne. Nach vorne. But when you move into the adjective form of forward, you find out that there's a word right there, V-O-R-W-A umlaut R-T-S. And it's said like this. Vorwärts. 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 Okay, stop that. We got it. So that explains the V on Mary's machine. It stands for Vorwärts, which is the adjective form of forward in German. So I, I don't know why they ended up mixing the two. Because we have the V on there, which obviously is indicative of the German culture, uh, standing for the word forward or Vorwärts. But then we have the traditional R on the bottom for reverse. So maybe they just decided that we're going to mix the two, and we're going to give them a flavor of German and a flavor of uh, what, what they would expect to see on a machine made for the, uh, you know, the American marketplace, and they decided to mix the two. So I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I loved, I loved my time in Germany and anything at all that ties the machine back to its uh, Western Germany uh, roots, I think it's fabulous. Don't you? So as we move over here, I'll just show that real quick. Obviously, a traditional clutch, you rotate it towards you to disengage it when you're going to wind a bobbin. And up on top, you've seen bobbin winders like that before. There's nothing super tricky about that. Uh, the only thing you have to be mindful of is, and it shows us in the book very well, is uh, when you're going to wind a bobbin, you're basically going to come from that spool of thread. Where is the spool of thread? There it is. You're going to come from that rear spool of thread right here, okay? And you're going to come around this uh, tensioner right here, all the way around it, around it. So just one time around it, I did two. So you're going to come from there, around it, and then you're going to come all the way back to where the bobbin is set. So it's basically like a loop around the tensioner so that it stays in place and uh, and then you wind your bobbin just as you normally would. And I probably didn't explain that very well, but Mary will have the resource of the book so it'll make complete sense to her. But it's basically kind of around that tensioner so you're not making just a single loop around the tensioner, you're making two loops uh, so that that thread doesn't kind of pop off of there as you're uh, winding a bobbin at a high rate of speed. So now we have what we're looking at now, along with this really cool radio style uh, front on the machine, which I think is just totally deco and totally awesome. Uh, we've got our stitch width controller on the right side there. And it goes from zero to four. And when you're doing a straight stitch, obviously like most machines, you're gonna set it on zero. The only thing a little bit odd about this machine, and I don't mean odd in a negative way, it just it's something you have to get used to, is to the left of that stitch width controller, you've got what I would call a restrictor. And this restrictor right here, if you dial it uh, up to four, then you can enjoy the full range of that stitch uh, width uh, controller. You can move it all the way to four. You can move it anywhere in between zero and four. But if you move this restrictor from four, say down to two, you're only gonna be able to move that stitch width controller up to two and that's as far as it's going to go. Don't try to force it if this is on two because that's as high as it's going to move. It limits how high uh, that stitch width controller is able to turn. So you know if, if you have a machine like this and it's set on one you're only going to be able to go up to one. That's it. That's, that's the biggest zigzag or that's the biggest pattern width that you're going to be able to get. So for most of the cam generated stitching, you're going to want to have this restrictor set on four so that you can move this stitch width indicator all the way to four because that's what they recommend for uh, the uh, cam generated type stitches. Having this set on four, and then I'll point out a couple of other things 
uh, on top of the machine as well that are necessary. For most of the sewing, unlike Debbie's Supernova, where I had pointed out that you have to either move it to left needle position or the cam, in some cases, will move the uh, needle position uh, to the left. On this 339, it doesn't matter. You can do uh, straight stitching, you can do uh, zigzag stitching, you can do snaky type uh, stitch sewing, which you'll eventually see what I mean by that. And you can do cam generated sewing with the uh, needle position in center, right, or left. It really doesn't matter. So it, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. So you might be saying, okay, where, does the, where, 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 where are the cams? What's that about? Well, on this chrome-plated uh, door right here, you put your finger on top, and I kind of put my, my thumb on the bottom as well, and this pops open. And then all of a sudden you can see inside of that little door, right now we have cam E, which I'm going to be taking out, and I'll actually show you how to take it out. And then we'll be putting cam A in so that we're ready for um, our first cam-generated stitch when we move to that after we do a straight stitch zigzag and probably also uh, the snaky type uh, stitch pattern that I enjoy a lot. I think it's really cool. So this is where your cam goes. Now the only thing semi tricky about this machine, and it's not really tricky, it's just something it's a knowledge factor. Right now you can see this little daisy wheel thing on top as I'll refer to it, which allows you to change the modes of the sewing is set on straight stitch. That's what that little t -t 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 across there indicates. Now this uh, daisy wheel controller that is essential to doing a lot of things with this machine can only be rotated to the left. So do not, if you have a 339, if you acquire a 339, do not try pushing this daisy wheel thing to the right because it's plastic and it's attached to some very sensitive parts and you may do damage to the machine. Only push it to the left. Only to the left. Okay? So right now we're on straight stitch, which is where I wanted to be, but we're going to go away from there for a reason. So in order to insert a cam or to remove a cam from this machine, you have to be on one of two settings. So I'm going to start rotating this to the left. So right now we're on number two which if we were going to sew this cam, cam E, it would give us this stitch output because the side that faces out on these cams when they're inserted is side number two. And you cannot remove or insert a cam when you're set in position two. I have my screen the wrong way. Give me a second. <clears throat> you cannot insert or remove a cam when you're on position two. So let's continue rotating it to the left and see what we get next. Perfect. Okay. This is what I refer to, refer to as kind of a snaky pattern. It has nothing to do with the cam. It's a, a stitch that's engineered into the machine like the straight stitch and the zigzag. And this is one of the settings that the machine can be on in order to insert and remove a cam. And it's because the cam actuator, and I'll widen the shot a little bit just to show you, uh, some of you really like to know the way things work, and that's cool. So if I widen this shot, you'll notice right now that the cam actuator, with it, which is this little thing right here, is rotated away from the cam. As I rotate this uh, daisy wheel dial on top further to the left, you're going to see that it will rotate into the cam. And that's why I said when it's on anything other than the snaky pattern or the zigzag, you do not want to try to insert or remove a cam. So watch what this does when I rotate it on top here to the next position. I'll do this my I'll do my best to do this with one finger, but it's uh because the machine is so doggone new it's it's a little bit stiff. So you can see it's starting to move right now. It's rotating. And right now we're at position one and you can see that the bottom of this actuator is rotated into the cam. Maybe you can see that if I zoom in. Yeah you can see it there. That's clear enough. And as I continue to rotate it around, we'll see if we can come back to another 
uh, option, such as the zigzag, like that right there, that stands for the zigzag. So again, when it's on the snaky pattern, the, the blah, 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 or the zigzag, I can either take a cam in, I can take a cam out, or I can put a cam in. I kind of blended my ideas there a little bit. So I'm going to now remove cam E because I don't want to start with cam E. I just don't. So I'm going to take this cam out, and I'm going to set it over here to the side along with uh, cams B, C, and D. I'll try to put these in some sort of order. So B, C, D, E. There we go. And now I'm going to take cam A, which is going to be our starting point. And again, we're going to be sewing the stitch on side two first. And the easiest way to insert this when uh, the setting on top here is either on the zigzag as it is right now or that snaky pattern is to touch this shaft, uh, this mounting shaft, and to find out where that flat side is. Right now the flat side is at, if you think of this like a clock, is right about at the one o'clock position. And then you look at your cam and there's a flat side on the bottom as the cam is facing out. So we're going to want to rotate this cam so the flat side is lining up with the shaft so that it'll slide on easily. Just kind of wiggle it into place and then it's fully mounted now on that whatever you would call this, the shaft or the stud or whatever it is. So, uh, you know, as long as you have it set properly up here with either the zigzag or the snaky pattern, you're good to go and being able to swap out cams as, as you want at will. So I'm going to close our, our pretty door and I'm going to use this towel to do it so I don't just totally put fingerprints all over Mary's machine. And again, since our goal is to start with the non-cam patterns, I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate this little daisy wheel on top back around to straight stitch, which is only one turn. And we're back at straight stitch. And then I've got to set my other dials as well. So I'm going to widen this shot a little bit. I'll just show you. It's pretty basic stuff, I know, because you guys are really, really smart. But I'll show it to you nonetheless. So this again we have on straight stitch. We're going to move our stitch width from uh, 4 over to 0. Our uh, stitch length controller just off camera over here is set at the largest uh, setting right now which is going to give us the biggest stitch and that's totally cool that's exactly what I want so I'm just going to leave this here our stitch width is at zero we've got our daisy wheel thing on top set on straight stitch our needle position doesn't matter at this point as far as getting the output that we want so I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring us down towards the needle get our material set up and I think we will do um, I think we'll try doing uh, four layers of this and then maybe we'll bump it up to eight. Again, I, I haven't tested this uh, canvas on this machine yet, so I may be shooting myself in the foot, but oh well, I do that all the time. Because I have a lot of confidence in these machines after I get done with them. And even though uh, I haven't specifically tested it, I think we'll be okay. So we'll try this new canvas material that I found. What do we just do? The four four bears polka? Now we're going to do double polka because it's so doggone quiet in here, isn't it? I'll just turn the volume down. So this is called double polka. And I don't I don't know if there's a single polka. That's a really good question if one of you asked that or articulated it in some way. Okay. So I'm going to get this uh, this canvas material I just found underneath the presser foot. Again, I'm going to start with four layers. And we'll lay down a straight stitch. And then I'll probably lay down a zigzag next to it. And actually, I could do a snaky pattern on it after that, too. Yeah, we might maybe we'll just do that. 
Okay, so first of all, a straight stitch <coughs> on Mary's uh, Foff. Dry hoodered, known and dry sick. All right, here we go. such a beautiful stitch wait until you see it up close you may be able to see it in the camera already I'm not looking over my shoulder so I don't know what you can see or can't see but you know this thread that I'm using um, is is fabulous uh, in many ways it's uh, if you uh, are a, a regular shopper at Joan fabrics which I would encourage I think they do a, a great job there in many 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 ways and actually uh, I've recently kind of partnered with them uh, amid this coronavirus uh, pandemic and my Soaholic posters I actually had them reprinted and on the bottom it says compliments of Scott at Cow Country Vintage Sewing and Joanne Fabrics and I gave them a slew of them so that they can hand them out to their customers that's kind of cool huh and I do that in part because the location that is nearest to me in Marinette Wisconsin they send me a lot of customers from there because they don't do repair at their location. So they send the customers down to Oconto, which from Marinette to Oconto, if you look it up on Google Maps or something like that, it's only about 18 to 20 miles. And many of these people otherwise have to drive 40 to 50 miles to find a competent person to uh, service their uh, vintage sewing machines. So there is a drop dead gorgeous straight stitch. You can see and we have it on the largest setting. And if we turn it over, am I close enough? I think I'm close enough. I'm just checking my angle there. Yeah, I could zoom in on this too, couldn't I? Duh. I could zoom in on this. Why don't we do that? That's normally what we do. Oh, I can move uh, Mary's uh, owner's manual out of the way too. Give myself a little bit more elbow room. So there's that straight stitch right now, and uh, yeah, honestly, it doesn't get any better than that. It's absolutely spot spot on. Am I zoomed all the way in? Yeah, I am. Isn't that fabulous? And we'll flip the material over, and we're not going to see anything dramatic. You're going to see an equally gorgeous lock stitch that Mary's Machine just uh, put out. Just spectacular. Let me zoom in on that. Exactly what we want to see. And that's that's four layers of, uh, of this canvas material. I almost started to say U.S. Army grade canvas, but I don't think the Army would use blue. Maybe the Navy would. The Navy might use blue. You never know. So let me do this. Let me go ahead and move this material back into position. And now we're going to lay down a zigzag next to it. And we have to change a couple of things when we're wanting to do a zigzag. And I'll just show you that real quick. It's not a big deal. It's, it's very easy to do. But it is, uh, it is a change you have to do in order to get a zigzag output. So step number one, we have to move our daisy wheel from straight stitch uh, over to zigzag and again zigzag is one of those settings that you can use uh, wouldn't it be great if we could push this dial to the right because zigzag I can literally see it we just passed it we were on zigzag to remove that cam and to insert the other one and now we have to go all the way around that's the only uh, potential setback uh, with this daisy wheel set up on this machine is you have to uh, get it on the proper setting all right, we're almost there. And I'm not, I, I probably do it much slower than Mary will do it. She'll probably be able to do it very quickly. So we've moved this to zigzag. We also now need to move our stitch width, obviously, to zigzag uh, as well. And we can leave our stitch length uh, on the largest setting, or we could certainly move it down if we wanted to. Just for sake of simplicity, I'll leave it where it's at. So all we did is move this to zigzag. We move this from 0 to 4, 
And again, our restrictor is already on four, which lets us go all the way up to four, which is good. Our needle position, we don't do a doggone thing with that unless you want to do something with it. Um, I don't. <laughs> and that's all we need to do in order to generate a zigzag. So we'll, we'll zoom in on the needle now. We'll lay down a zigzag uh, next to this uh, straight stitch, this gorgeous straight stitch we just laid down. Straight stitch we just laid down. If I can speak, maybe I'll grab a quick drink of water. Again, as you're watching these premieres, and you're uh, you're relaxing, you're kind of kicked back. Uh, you're probably not burning a lot of energy, but I burn a lot of energy in premieres. I really do. I mean, you've seen me move around. You've just seen me do my thing, and uh, it's all about energy for me. I love premieres for that reason. So let's do this now. Let's lay down a zigzag next to this straight stitch. Uh, and I may end up playing some of these polka songs more than once, but I'm going to put on the Enthusiast Polka, if you can imagine that. I don't know if you can hear that. It's totally old radio. And the guy goes, the Enthusiast Polka by the United States Marine Corps Band. So, all right, here we go with the zigzag. I love this. And if you might say, boy, you really kind of hit that uh, foot controller, uh, hardly at all, barely, just barely touched it. This machine, again, has the looks of uh, a sexy necky machine, but the power you would come to expect from a, a Foth. I mean, there's, I can't imagine Mary sewing anything or trying to sew anything that this machine can't absolutely knock out of the park. Let me see if I can look over my, oh yeah, you can see it without me adjusting the camera shot, just because we have a lot more to cover. So there's our original straight stitch and our zigzag down below. Both are just absolutely textbook perfect. If I flip this around, nothing different. This is our lock stitch and there's our straight stitch and our zig zigzag down below just spot on absolutely spot on so i'm going to move this material back into position underneath the needle and now we're going to do our snaky stitch pattern and i'm going to do it two different ways i'm going to do it short and i'm going to do it long so i'm going to adjust my camera shot so you can see the little daisy wheel thing we'll kind of come away from the needle real quick <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Come out a little bit more. All right, so we're going to rotate that daisy wheel thing until we uh, get to the snaky pattern. And again, the zigzag and the snaky pattern that we're heading towards are the only two settings that will allow you to insert and remove a cam. I know I've said that multiple times, but repetition is the key. So now we're at the straight stitch. Now we're at two. And now we're at the snaky pattern. And I see a big old fingerprint on the front of Mary's machine. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna sew the snoky the snoky. We're gonna sew the snaky type pattern, and there's probably an official name for that. You know, there really probably is. Um, but we're going to sew that with the current stitch length setting over here, which is set at the longest position. And then I'm going to make an adjustment without moving away from the needle uh, down closer to the zero. And I'll show you how much it changes the look of that stitch. And I've done this in other premieres, but uh, I think it's fun to do that. So we'll do the snaky pattern uh, first at this stitch length setting, and then we're going to shorten it up quite a bit. All right. And we'll do this without any music. Just kind of buzz down, and you can listen to Mary's fabulous uh, Foff, 339 uh, getting the job done. And again, I, I oftentimes will do eight layers of uh, canvas. I'm only doing four layers right now, but trust me, four layers of this canvas is it's an, it's an intense sew-off. It really is. 
All right, so let's do the snaky pattern long. Then I'll adjust the stitch length down quite a bit, and we'll do it super short. Okay, here we go. This is probably one of my favorite stitches. I like this one a lot. It's just kind of a fun curvy type stitch and and uh, I've actually done a better job than I did on Debbie's Premiere in choosing a thread color that for the most part has good visibility on all the materials that I'm going to be sewing uh, during this Premiere. You learn from your mistakes, right? <laughs> or you improve on things is maybe a more positive way to say it. So I'm going to slide this material back into place again. We have four layers of canvas and off camera I'm going to shorten up that stitch length uh, pretty significantly and we'll see what impact that has on this same stitch pattern output. All right, you ready? Here we go. Let me just check my thread real quick. Yep, good to go. And I'm going to intentionally slow it down just to show you don't have to race. You don't have to race. You can have real, real, real good control with this uh, 339. And look at that, I ended in the up position. How cool is that? So you can see comparatively the two, if I kind of spun that around, they're the identical stitch. One has a long stitch length, the one here, and the other one we just sewed is this row, and it gives it a totally different look. I just think that's a gorgeous stitch, don't you? I think you can do a lot with a stitch like that. And again, it's not part of the cam system. It's a, a stitch that's engineered uh, into the machine. See what I mean by how quiet it is in the workshop? Super duper quiet. You could hear a pin drop. Hey, I just dropped a pin. Not literally. So I'm going to get this back into position now. I'm trying to think if there's any other stitch pattern that I want to show you. The snaky pattern, I've done the zigzag already. We've done a straight stitch on this as well. Just trying to think if there's anything else I can show you that would just be fun. You know what I could do is I could do a real super short uh, straight stitch as well. I can, on the outside of here, just kind of border it. We started with a straight stitch. We could end with a straight stitch. And uh, I'm just going to adjust off camera. I'm going to adjust my little daisy wheel uh, to straight stitch. Right now we're on the curvy stitch. There we go. See, it doesn't take long. I mean, it, it just, uh, it's just developing the habit. So I've, I've moved that daisy wheel that's on top of the machine from where we were to straight stitch. I've got to adjust my, uh, my stitch width controller from four back to zero, which I'm doing again off camera, but you've seen that multiple times. And now I'm gonna leave my stitch length controller pretty much where it's at, uh, the, the same setting that we just did this uh, pattern so off, uh, the snaky stitch. Uh, and now I'm gonna lay down a straight stitch that is probably in the range of around 20 stitches per inch. Okay, you ready? All right, here we go. And I ended in the up position. Boy, is this a good day. And you can see right now when you look at that, I just kind of turned the material around so you could see it. Compared to the first one we did, oh, I'm rotating it the wrong way. Here, I'll, I'll take the material out and then you can see it. But we're pretty much in the satin uh, range right now of where that uh, stitch length size is. It's, it's super teeny tiny. Super teeny tiny. And there are reasons that you'll want to use a stitch setting like that uh, for different uh, things you're doing. It might be on an applique. It could even be on a quilting edge that you would be using something like that to finish off uh, a stitch uh, like that. What you can kind of see here is I hold it in front of the camera. 
the uh, size of that satin stitch, you see the other ones, and then our original stitch on the bottom right there. So you get an idea of the range that this machine is able to generate from something like this, a straight stitch that is quite large, all the way down to a satin style stitch. So I'm going to throw this in the back as a definite pass. And also to dispel the uh, urban myth that German sewing machines cannot sew a straight stitch. Yes, I'm poking fun again at Debbie Gaben. And we will move on from there. And what we're going to move into now is uh, probably focusing more on our cam generated stitches. We already have cam A in the machine. But first of all, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, since we're set on straight stitch right now, I'm just going to change our stitch length from a satin, satin style, very teeny tiny, to a larger straight stitch. And we'll see if we can buzz down this genuine elk hide. Because I did want to show the delicate side of... Uh, Mary's machine by demonstrating hopefully all of the cams but I also wanted to show the rugged side again this has that those that cleated belt it's got the motor uh, burst and power that you would expect from a FOF it just has a lot sexier lines uh, and kind of a deco look to it but that, don't let that deceive you it's got the same meaty uh, strength that you would expect to see uh, coming out of a FOF machine so let's go down this uh, uh, genuine uh, elk hide and then we'll move into our cam uh, stitching. All right, are you ready? Let me just take that take up arm all the way up. All right, here we go. Now I barely had the foot controller down, truthfully, barely had it down. And uh, this machine launched into this. And if, you, if you're new to this channel, take a look at that from the side. It's basically like, like sewing a belt, this uh, genuine elk hide. And it's chemically processed, so it's extremely difficult stuff to be able to pierce. Once it's chemically processed, it basically takes the fibers of that uh, leather and it just puts almost like armor coats them. And yet... Uh, Mary's uh, 339 went through this like it was nothing, like it was a light sew off. And not only did it go through it like it was a light sew off, but it laid down stitches that are absolutely uh, break worthy. Absolutely break worthy. I'm going to kind of zoom in on them and you can take a closer look at these. Aren't those, I mean, they're just spectacular. Just spectacular. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can look at the totality of them and then we'll flip it and we'll look at the lock stitch and we'll, I'll zoom in on that as well for you. But again, look at it from the side. It's just crazy. I'll show you when we get to the other side. And the good thing, the thing I love about this elk hide so much, and again, I'm getting low on it, so I'm kind of getting bummed. But even on the nap side, it does such a good job of being able to present those stitches. There's our lock stitch absolutely spectacular it just doesn't get any better than that folks it just doesn't again you look at that top edge of this material i'll come out on the shot a little bit look at the top edge of that we basically just sewed it we sewed a belt if i go back the other way again you can just see the stitch output it, it it's perfect the spacing the formation the integrity of the stitch it's just spot on so this uh, genuine elk hide is a definite pass for uh, Mary's uh, FOF 390. So I'm going to throw this to the back as well. And now we're going to start to move, well, kind of debating, kind of debating. No, I think we probably should move into the pattern uh, cam sew-offs now because we've got a, a fair number of them to do. Uh, total of 10 basically. So I'm going to stick with our uh, canvas. I, I really like this canvas stuff. I really do. 
could do that, or I could do these on leather too. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, why don't we, since we just sewed canvas, let me throw this to the side. And I think we'll do these uh, patterns. At least we'll do some of the patterns on leather. Why don't, why don't, we, do, why don't we do half and half? I'll do uh, cams uh, A and B on leather. And then I'll do uh, cams C, D, and E on the uh, canvas. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit so that we don't waste uh, the leather either. And you'll see some of these uh, also on Facebook as well. I did some off-camera shots of some of these uh, cam generated stitches just to show uh, the machine capabilities before it was introduced to the Premier. And uh, I think it's super impressive. Okay, so now the settings to do a cam output stitch. Not super complicated, but you do have to make a couple adjustments. And actually, yeah, actually I'll have to, I don't want to come out any further. I want to stay right here. I want to stay right here and then I'll show you on stitch length as well, the adjustment that we make. So right now, bring that up a little bit. Right now we're looking at kind of the central control region right here. And our little daisy wheel thing is on straight stitch right now. We need to move that over to number one. So if I start going to the left, we're at number two right now. Now we're at the snaky pattern. And now we're at number one. We're at number one. Now I have to move the stitch width to four. So we're starting on pattern one. Stitch width is on four. Now we need to make a simple adjustment on stitch length. Again, with cam generated stitches, you're typically going to set it just above zero. And right now we're set way, way too high. And because of the anger, angle, blah, because of the angle of the camera shot, uh, I'm not going to be able to show you from the left side where it is but just imagine that it's going to be probably about one or two millimeters above the zero is where I'm going to move this stitch length to okay and again if you move it too far down to the zero uh, the material is barely going to move and you might especially when you're sewing leather you might end up generating kind of a mess so I don't want to I don't want to get too close to that zero or I might get an outcome that is not favorable. And we don't like not favorable things to happen on live premieres, do we? Okay, so our stitch length is set about two millimeters above zero. Stitch width is set. Daisy wheel is set on uh, number one. And now we're gonna head down to the needle and we'll see how uh, Mary's Machine does sewing this particular pattern off of Cam A. Cam A stitch pattern one uh, through this uh, three to four ounces of I was going to say German leather, but you wouldn't buy that, so I'll just say through these through this three to four ounces of Italian leather. The Italians and the Germans can be friends, right? So we're, we have a German sewing machine sewing on Italian leather. What could be more perfect? What could be more perfect? Ah, I know the answer to that. What could be more perfect is a little bit of polka music. Oh, I'm loving this. This so much takes me back to my time in Germany. Oh, I'm loving this. I am loving this. Okay. So let's lay down stitch pattern number one on cam A on this leather and we'll see how Mary's machine does. I've been doing a lot of sewing on this needle so hopefully I don't have to change out needles during the premiere. That would be, that would be a bummer. But I'll do it if I have to. Alright, here we go. And I'm regulating the speed right now very intentionally. I'm not, I'm not pedal to the metal, I'm just kind of buzzing along. Because we've got a lot of needle swing right now, a lot of needle swing. 
That's a fairly complicated stitch. And I stopped in the up position. How, how, how do you like that? So that's the pattern we just sewed right there as I rotate the material around, which I think it's a really cool pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and clip these threads, and the only thing we're going to change to enjoy the benefits of that, what really is like two cams within one, is we have to change that daisy wheel from one uh, to two. And then we're going to get that other stitch pattern on the other side uh, of this cam A. So I'm going to clip that thread. Clip that thread. We'll get that back into place so we can do our next uh, stitch pattern off of cam A. All right, press your foot is down. So I can change, I, I can certainly change the camera angle, uh, just so you, if, if you are like me and you're a visual learner, then there's no harm in uh, redundancy. I'm just, if I do that, it's not to insult your intelligence, it's just to set you up for success, truthfully. So the only thing we're going to change on is this daisy wheel from one to two, and again, we only rotate it to the left. We don't touch our stitch width, it stays at four. We don't touch our stitch length. Uh, we're getting good feed with material, but we're getting very good uh, uh, output as far as the look of that stitch. Isn't that gorgeous? And obviously the lock stitch is going to look just as, just as spectacular. Blah. So I'm just going to go to this little controller up here that I refer to as a daisy wheel. Again, FOF probably has a very specific name for it. And I might get nasty letters from somebody in Germany, as I sometimes do. And that's fine. I like letters. So I'm rotating this to the left. Our next position is the uh, zigzag. Straight stitch. And now, last but not least, we're on pattern uh, setting two up on the daisy wheel. And the two, the two will not be absolutely centered. It's going to be just slightly off to the right. And that's there's nothing wrong with that, that's just the way it is. But it's not perfectly centered. That bothered me the first time I sat down to this again. It's like, hey, it's not perfectly centered. What's going on? But there you go. We take what we get and we don't throw a fit. So we're going to do this next stitch pattern now. Cam A stitch pattern 2. Because we just changed our daisy wheel to 2. And we're going to do it without polka music, as hard as that is. And uh, here we go, after I get my take-up arm ready. All right, here we go. And again, I'm not rushing the machine because it's a, it's a complicated uh, stitch pattern with a lot of needle swing. I shouldn't say it's complicated. It's, it's really a, a, a variation of the blind hem stitch, but Still, when you're dealing with needle swing, it's okay to let the machine kind of take its time. Oh, I ended in the down position. I thought I was going to end perfectly, but oh well. So let me kind of spin this around and give you an initial look of this. It's not really a true blind hem because you'll notice that in between each of the points, there's actually an arch. It's actually curved. And you'll see that uh, closer up. Uh, you know, after, hopefully, if I remember to do it. <laughs> Give that a clip as well. All right, get that into place. Yeah, again, that's, that's not really a true blind hem because it's got like an arch in between it. But it's uh, it's a gorgeous oh wrong way, it's a gorgeous stitch. Nonetheless, and I just remembered because of the color thread uh, and this type of leather that we're using, this Italian leather. 
There's good luck seeing that lock stitch, but it's there. It is there. It really is. Okay, so we've we've done both stitch patterns on cam eight. So what do we need to do now to uh, get cam B into the machine? What do we need to do? You remember? If you're saying through the chat, because I can't see that right now, if you're saying through the chat, well, you have to do something with that daisy wheel thing. You're absolutely right. Again, right now we're on setting two. So we cannot do anything with the cam as far as taking it out, putting it in. We either have to be on the snaky pattern or we have to be on the zigzag. Those two settings are the only ones that you are able to use to be able to take a cam out or put a cam in. So I'm going to start rotating this to the left. We'll see what we come up with first. Oh, perfect. There you go. I just rotated it to one position and now we're on the snaky pattern. So now I can open this really cool radio chrome door thingy. I didn't turn my camera around. And I'm going to change my shot just a little bit. So we're on the snaky pattern. And now I'm able to easily, assuming my hands aren't slippery, I'm able to easily slide cam A out. And now I'm going to put cam B in. And remember, just a little tip, just again, you just feel the, the uh, mounting shaft, basically. Find that flat side. Right now the flat side is right about at the 9 o'clock position. If you think of this like a clock, it's right on the left side over here. So I'm going to line my cam up with the flat side facing the same direction so I don't have to struggle in trying to get this cam to slide into position. So it went on beautifully. This again is cam B. I'm going to close my little door and leave a big fingerprint on it so that Mary's going, Hey, what's up with the fingerprint? <laughs> she wouldn't do that. She's quite a lady. But her husband might, or somebody that is watching with her might say, Hey! So, uh, are we ready to launch into the next cam-generated stitch-off through Cam B? Our stitch width is correct. Our stitch length is correct. <gasps> we got to do something with the daisy wheel, don't we? Yes, we do. We have to do something with the daisy wheel and move it from the snaky pattern. Otherwise, that's what we're going to get. And we have to move it to position one. And it's only one position away. Boom. There we go. So we move that to one. We've got our stitch width good to go. We've got our stitch length good to go. Everything else is perfect. That is perfect. Beautiful machine. We're going to zoom down to our needle. And now we're going to do stitch pattern one on cam B. All right, here we go. And a little bit of big top. This is called Big Top, this song. Okay, so now we're going to go into our next stitch pattern, Cam B, stitch pattern one. All right, here we go. I stopped in the up position. It is a good day. All right, press your foot up. I'm going to just rotate this around. You can see it's my building block. Isn't that awesome? I can't tell if you're seeing that or not because I have my screen the wrong way. Yeah, it's our building block pattern. Again, this is a stitch pattern one on cam B, which I think is absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I love this stitch. Yeah, I mean, from my position, I can see the lock stitch on there, and I can zoom in on it, and maybe we can see it, but it's going to be, it's going to be tough. Okay, let me get our material back into place, and then we're going to make an adjustment on our daisy wheel.
from position one to position two. And this will be our last stitch on the leather. Remember I said we're gonna do cams uh, A and B, and then we're gonna move on to canvas probably. We could certainly continue with leather. I have that other piece of leather, but I had planned to do some of them on canvas as well. Okay, so off camera, because you guys are super duper smart, I'm just going to take that little daisy wheel thing, I'm going to rotate it to the left. We're at position one. One rotation to the left gets us to the zigzag. we got to keep going. Now we're at straight stitch. And now, one more rotation, we're at position two. So we should get stitch pattern two on cam B. All right, here we go. Ended in the up position. So this is going to be kind of a blind hem as well. You can kind of see it, but it's got a lot more detailed um, center points between the points uh, than a traditional um, blind hem would have. It has more of a decorative type feature to it. You'll, you'll see that when I move my fingers out of the way. So these are the four that we generated. I think you can see all four of those. Yeah, you can. I'm looking over my shoulder now. So the first one we did is this one over here. Where's my finger? First one we did is this one over here, all the way to my right. Then we did this one, which is that uh, kind of a blind hem decorative style with the arch in the middle. Then we did building block. And then last but not least, we did this blind hem style one. But again, it's not a traditional blind hem because it's a lot more complex uh, in the um, output of the stitch than a, a blind hem would be. But I just think they're all spectacular, I really do. I think they're all super, super duper. Or as the Germans say, super with a Z. It sounds like a, it's not spelled with a Z, but it, it has that Z sound to it, super. Or you can say fantastisch, fantastisch, which is obviously, you can already hear what it sounds like, it's fantastic. So there's what we did off of cams A and B on this live premiere. Yeah, I know. Crazy, crazy outstanding. So let me throw this to the back. Obviously, that's a pass. And now again, uh, we're done with cam B. So in order to enjoy cam C, we have to do a couple things. Like put on more music. Music that I'm going to turn up a little bit. Okay, so let's come away from the feed dogs. Okay, you real smart people, type in the chat. What do I need to do in order to remove that cam from behind that cool radio front that's on the front of Mary's machine? Type it in the chat. One of two settings on the machine. Quickly do it, quickly do it, quickly do it. In the meantime, I'm gonna be doing the polka off camera that you cannot see. Yeah. Ari, you had enough time. You didn't get it done by now, then you need to improve your typing skills. So right now we're on setting two, because that's the cam setting that we just sewed off of cam B. We don't want that. So, in order to remove a cam, we rotate this to the left to either a zigzag or to the snaky pattern. And the first thing that's gonna come up is none other than the snaky pattern. See that? So now, I'm gonna widen my shot just a little bit after I kick my garbage can out of the way. I'm 
And we're gonna open that beautiful chrome door. Again, I look, I, I think of it like a, a vintage radio. Doesn't it look like a vintage radio? And because we're on the snaky pattern, we should be able to just pull this cam straight out, which we did. And now I'm gonna feel for that flat side, which is almost at the 12 o'clock position. It's kind of between the 12 and the one o'clock position, right on top there. So I'm gonna take cam C, and I'm gonna put the flat side facing towards the top, right around the 12 o'clock position. And it slides on beautifully. So I'm gonna close our chrome door. and wipe it off so I don't get a text message or a note from Mary saying, uh, fingerprint, fingerprint, hello. <laughs> oh, oh, I love it. I, you can't blame her. I mean, look at, just look at this machine. Oh my gosh. The Italians had to be absolutely livid when this, uh, 339 rolled out the latter part of the 1950s going to the 1960s. They had to be livid, like, those doggone Germans! Doggone them! Dog, blah, 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 blah. Okay, are we done? Are we ready to sew Cam C? Are we ready? Our stitch width is good. Our stitch length looks like it's pretty much spot on. else or needle position we don't do a doggone thing with that <gasps> we need to change the daisy wheel from the snaky pattern that we use to take the cam out and to put the other cam in and we need to go to number one why because we're number one we're number one we're number one okay I hear you that's enough Scott calm down calm down buddy so I'm rotating this to the left and the first thing we come up to magically is number one. So again, there's a few steps, but they're very easy. They're very easy to execute. It's not super complicated. So now I'm going to adjust the camera and contemplate. Do I do canvas or do we stick with leather? What do you think? I agree. Let's stick with leather. I just think leather is just... Well, you already know what I think of leather. And yes, I do sniff it off camera. And I'm not going to apologize for it. <laughs> Who doesn't sniff leather? If you don't sniff leather, there's probably something wrong with you. Seriously. Sniffing leather is just awesome. Okay, what else do I have? I typed in polka, and, and they didn't give me a huge number of choices. So let me type in German real quick and see if I get anything for German. <clears throat> I got two things. I got Brahms Lullaby and I got Eth Grola Nicht. Okay, what's, why don't we do Brahms Lullaby? I'll just keep the volume way down. Oh, he's even going to sing it in German. And no, that's not Bill singing, although Bill could certainly sing this. I don't know if Hans sings. That'd be something to ask Hans. If I don't remember, one of you ask Hans if he likes singing. Okay, so let's continue with, uh, <coughs> with leather, but <coughs> let's see. Two, four. <coughs> I'm going to need a bigger piece of leather, I think. Got this and this, and we're gonna be doing a total of two, four, six stitches. I could probably fit six stitches on this, couldn't I? One, two, three, four, five. Six. It would be a little bit tight. Should we should we go for it? Should we try to do it? Yes, let's try to do it. Okay, so we're gonna to try to do the last three cams. Cam, uh, what do we have? Cam C, D, and E. We'll try to fit them all on this piece of leather that over a little bit because now I'm nervous a little bit about space. Okay, so we've got all of our settings correct, maybe, and now we're going to lay down cam C stitch one. You ready? 
Here we go. Stop there. I just thought of something with all the sewing I've been doing. I hope I don't run out of bobbin thread. Wouldn't that be a hoot to have to wind a bobbin in the middle of this premiere? There's no harm in that. I mean, we could do it, but it wouldn't be on the it wouldn't be on the list of things. Oh, I plan to do that. It would be like, oops. Matter of fact, that note to self, note to self. I should probably wind. Look at how that stuff curls. Holy mackerel. Um, I should probably wind an, uh, a fresh bobbin and put it in the uh, machine before I ship it to uh, Mary so that she doesn't have to sit down to it and start to get really excited like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. We're switching out cams, blah, blah, or out of bobbin thread. Out of bobbin thread. Okay. So I'm going to line this material up and now off camera, I am going to, on that daisy wheel thing, go from one to two There we go, we should be on two. So again, we're on cam C, and we're gonna lay down uh, the next stitch pattern, which is stitch pattern two. All right, let me just take my take-up arm up. All right, here we go. And the little sound you hear is the spool on top of the uh, machine. Uh, I mean, again, we're, we're using a lot of thread to lay down these uh, stitch patterns. They have quite a bit of complexity. So the spool of thread is just kind of going droop, droop, droop. And I do have a, a felt underneath it, but it's still, you know, it's kind of, it's happy. It's kind of hopping. So there's the next one we did. It's kind of the Christmas tree one that we did. The one before that is kind of our shell pattern. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is cam C right there. Let me do it like this because that's the way it would be. That's cam C. So now we're going to go through our process. And if you weren't involved the last time in typing into the chat, you can already guess what my question is going to be. We need to get that cam C out of the machine now and get ready to put cam D in. What do we need to do? What do we need to do? If you said we need to move that daisy wheel thing, as Scott calls it, we need to move that daisy wheel thing from position two to either zigzag or the snaky pattern, then you would be absolutely correct. Or as the Germans say, you would be richtig, richtig, which is correct. You would be correct. So we're gonna open our door, just so we're ready. And kind of watch that little actuator thing that I pointed out before. You'll see it rotate as I move the daisy wheel thing on top. And now we're on the snaky pattern. So this cam should just come right out as it does. Cam C, we're going to put it to the side. Cam D now we're going to put in. And again, we're looking for that flat side, which is right about the four o'clock four o'clock position if you think about this like a, uh, a clock. So I'm going to adjust the flat side of the cam which is here on the bottom towards that direction so that the cam will slide on easily. And Then I will shut our chrome door, our radio chrome door, and adjust my camera angle. <coughs> Excuse me. 
I can't do that yet. Why can't I do that? Why can't I do that? Why can't I do that? Yes, I'm probably making you seasick. Because we've got the cam in the machine, we've got cam D, but we didn't do what? What If we sewed right now on that leather, what would we get? The snaky pattern, exactly. So we need to move now the daisy wheel thingy one position to the left, which gets us to position one. Now we're ready to move down to the needle and to sew the first stitch pattern on cam D. Once Scott stops moving the camera, and I'm actually not even moving the camera, I think this tripod, tripod has maybe a, some sort of a malfunction in it or something. Okay, so Cam D. What did you think of Brahms Lullaby? That was kind of cool, huh? So now we're going to do the Ith Rola Nicht. I could totally see Bill singing this one too. Y'all know, y'all know that Bill can sing. A, he's got a tenor voice that is just like heavenly. If you haven't, if you haven't heard him, if you haven't heard him, you you've been missing it out. Check his uh, Facebook page. All right, so stitch pattern one on Cam D. Here we go. Down position, bummer. So I don't know what you would call that. I would call that kind of a modified shell type stitch pattern, but I, I think it's gorgeous, don't you? Really pretty. All right, let's go on to our next stitch pattern, which is stitch pattern two on Cam D. This guy really is getting into it, watch out. I'm serious, y'all. Bill can sing like this. Totally. Check out his Facebook page, and I hope I'm not embarrassing Bill. Actually, I don't care, because his talent is a gift from God, and I'm broadcasting that. Okay, so let's get our leather back into position. We're going to move on to stitch pattern two from Cam D, and in order to do that, we have to make a change on the daisy wheel thingy. Now we're going to be changing it from number one to number two, which I will do off camera. I hope I didn't turn it too far. I think I'm, I think I'm centered on the two. It's a little bit tricky. Not real tricky, but a little bit. Of course, with dirty reading glasses, it doesn't help either. So, all right, so this should be stitch pattern two on cam D, and we just have one more cam to, to get to. Cam E after we finish this stitch. All right, here we go. I am so nervous about running out of bobbin thread. I'm serious. My spool on top is, is good to go. But I've done a ton of sewing on this bobbin. And we ended in the top needle position. So here's almost like a scallop look. I think this is super awesome, don't you? It's kind of a scallop look, that last one we just did. Maybe like a half a scallop. Now I'm getting hungry for Red Lobster. I know, that was a horrible joke. That was horrible. Did he really just say that? Yeah, I did. Okay. Oh, you see how that just popped back? That horrible, horrible curly thread, which I love because it came from Joanne Fabrics, American Quilters 
American quilting thread. It's very good thread. It's just curly. Why is it so curly? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I'm going to get the material back into place. And we just have two more stitches to do. So yeah, this, this leather was more than big enough to get the job done. So I am going to change my camera angle. Just so we can kind of look at the stitches that we've done so far. Off of cam, was it cam C and D? On the left, we've got cam C, and then we just did cam D right there. All gorgeous. Aren't they, aren't they beautiful stitches? I have a fruit fly that is just determined to torment me. Probably going to land right on the camera any second now. You can tell I'm distracted. He's like, fruit flies are just the worst, aren't they? Does anyone else hate fruit flies? Type it in the chat. We should form a club. The fruit fly haters. I would so sign up for that in a heartbeat. I would. Okay, so since we've done it so many times, and you can always rewind this if you own a 339 or you acquire a 339, or Mary, for that matter, can rewind this premiere as well. Uh, off camera, I'm going to get us set up by, first of all, moving our daisy wheel to either zigzag or to the snaky pattern so that I can remove cam uh, D and put in cam E, our final cam. All right, so I'm opening that beautiful chrome door, taking out cam D, setting it off to the side, checking for that flat side, which is right around the one o'clock position, putting on cam E, closing my little radio door and now the only thing I have left to do is to adjust that daisy wheel from the snaky pattern over to one which should only be one position to the left yeah I should be in the right position I, I almost got nervous because I think I turned a little bit too far but it should be good to go all right let me turn my camera screen around so we have our final cam in here now, cam E, and we have it set on stitch pattern one, and uh, we're going to lay down stitch pattern one. Everything else is set. All right, here we go. down position but that's okay so this is I don't know what you would call this you may have your own name for it it's kind of a shell stretch type pattern almost I, I think it's gorgeous it has that little linking piece that go between them and it's just uh, you can imagine seeing that on a quilt or on any decorative piece that you're sewing it would just be I think it would be spectacular and again, you can change the look of it dramatically by just adjusting uh, either your stitch length or even though the book says so on uh, number four on the stitch width setting, uh, I don't always follow rules either, as you probably know. But for sure you can modify the stitch length and, and totally change the look of uh, this last stitch pattern that we just did here, the one I'm doing it upside down, the one on the bottom which is now on the top. Probably not doing a super job of keeping it even, but that leather is kind of bending a little bit too as I do it. So, All right, so we have one stitch pattern left to do on cam E. We're going to lay it down right next to this one. And off camera, what do you think I'm doing off camera, other than maybe dancing or some other silly thing? I'm changing our daisy wheel thing from one over to two. OK, 
Okay, so I've got the daisy wheel on two now, and we're going to do our final stitch pattern on cam E. And uh, hopefully Murphy's Law does not play out. I've been talking about my concern about all the sewing I've been doing on this one bobbin. And hopefully we don't run out. We can do this last run of stitches. All right, keep your fingers and toes crossed. Here we go. Blah, blah. And I will boost it at the very end, so get ready for it. I'm still only about 20% of the way down, folks. Even that little boost I did, it was like 20% of the way down. Oh, this is a gorgeous one. This is super cool. It's kind of a building block, but a, with a different configuration. It's got like a building block within a building block. Isn't that gorgeous? Yay, our bobbin last, this, this bobbin in the machine, holy mackerel, if you knew the amount of sewing it did, not just during this premiere, but also in off-camera sewing as well, Mary is going to be able to sew up a storm with how much you're able to get as far as output from these bobbins. It's just crazy. It's crazy, the amount of output that I've gotten from this bobbin. Spectacular. Spectacular! Or as the Germans say, Spectacular! No, they don't. They say, Fantastisch or Super. Wunderbar. Okay, let me kind of put it like that. And I want our other decorative one next to it. And our genuine elk hide. Maybe they can do that. That's probably easier. I'll put the elk hide right in the middle. So what do you think of this 339? What do you think of it? Other than spectacular, right? Exactly. Exactly spectacular. All right, I'm going to move this one over here. It's probably be a little bit easier for me. <clears throat> All right, and you've already seen these, but we're going to look at them again because I just think that they're they're worth seeing more than once. So the one on the left, the one we're looking at right now, was basically. I'm kind of doing them out of order. Let me make an adjustment. There we go. Okay, so the one we're looking at now is cams A and B that we did first, which I think you would agree is just spectacular. I like that one second up from the bottom, especially with that little arch in between. Don't you? Isn't that kind of cool? You could really do some fun stuff with that. And then uh, the other cam generated stitches we did is on C, D, and E, which is over here. And I think I've got them in pretty much the right order, sort of. So from the bottom, yeah, from the bottom to the top, the bottom two rows are cam C, the next two rows up are cam D, and then the final two rows right at the top uh, are cam E. So I'll zoom in on those even a little bit more. And again, just spectacular. I could probably even shorten that stitch length a little bit more. I, I was a little bit nervous about getting too close to the zero, but I'm probably a little bit higher than I needed to be. And these would be even better defined. As, as spectacular as they are, uh, they would be even better defined if I had been a little bit more aggressive about that stitch length. Again, you want to aim for about two or three millimeters above zero when you're doing your uh, stitch length setting for cam generated stitches on this uh, 300 non in dry uh, machina. Uh, but I think it was probably a little bit higher than that. But still very, very spectacular. And then we did our uh, genuine uh, elk hide 
with a straight stitch and it just doesn't get much better than that folks and I already showed you the other side during the premiere if you want to see it again rewind but again this is basically the thickness of a belt it's basically the thickness of a belt and then way over here because I, I had to move it is our other stitch off that we did where on the far left we have the equivalent of like a satin stitch with a straight stitch then we have our curvy snaky stitch and then we have our longer curvy snaky stitch the third one from the left then we have our zigzag and then we have our super long uh, straight stitch on the far right and I'm gonna loosen up my camera just a little bit so I can flow down a little bit less jerky I know spectacular and again we've already shown the uh, lock side of this four layers of canvas folks we're not talking light cotton or anything like that we did some serious sorry I had to go after that fruit fly <laughs> I had to go after that fruit fly a little pesty guy I'm sure the good Lord creates everything for a reason but I if I had had a discussion with him we would not have fruit flies we just wouldn't birds or whatever eat them would have to eat something else TV dinners like the rest of us or something like that so those are gorgeous stitches everything that uh, Mary uh, Rowan's uh, Foff 339 has done during this premiere is in my opinion my humble opinion uh, absolutely breakworthy absolutely breakworthy and I had uh, way off to the left there I had some of that uh, what do you call it compressed felt and maybe on the last song the last polka song I'm gonna move all these to the side and again these will be sent with a machine as I always do I always 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 send sew-offs with the machine so that after the customer has seen that machine perform live on a premiere like this they can actually touch those sew-offs that were sewn on their machine I think that's cool maybe I'm just uh, goofy or something like that but um, I think it's really really cool oh you know what I never pointed out but it's so obvious and you guys are so smart down on the bottom of the machine I did not point out that that button on the left is for your light and the little knobby thing on the left is to drop your feed dogs so I just realized I talked about the other controls the other features and did not talk about that so what was I gonna say oh yeah 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 so right from this angle then I'm gonna come off the tripod right from this angle I'm gonna adjust our settings and uh, just for fun I'm just gonna buzz down that uh, compressed felt three layers of it as we normally do so I'm gonna fold it in the mid-range fold it again get it underneath the presser foot try to get it underneath the presser foot after I get done folding it I got a C in origami class if you were wondering yes I did and I got a D as far as remembering to turn my camera screen around so I can see what you're seeing but I got an A in restoration. Hey! How cool is that? An A in restoration is really what I was aiming for. So what I'm going to do right now on here is I'm going to change our daisy wheel from 2 where it's at right now over to straight stitch. Although it would be fun to do a curvy stitch. Why don't I do that? Why don't I do a curvy stitch on here uh, and then I'll lay down a straight stitch next to it and then I'll lay down and I'm totally gonna to run on a bobbin thread I'm, I'm just totally setting myself up for failure here but oh well so I'm gonna lay down a a snaky stitch I'll do a straight and then I'll do a zigzag and if we don't run on a bobbin thread I'm even more impressed with this uh, amazing Foff 339 okay what are we gonna put on next Mary is from Kentucky let me type in the search word Kentucky, see if anything pops up. Yes, I spelled Kentucky right. No results. I'm filing a formal complaint with YouTube. 
There's no results for Kentucky. What the heck? Uh, what else do we have? How about blues? Let's end this with a bluesy song. All right, this next one is called Blue, Blue Pearl. No, that's Calm. I don't want to play that one. General One. General One is called Bright. Let's try that. Well, that almost feels Calypso-y. Calypso-y. Okay, so here goes the snaky stitch. And hopefully we don't run out of bobbin thread. You never know. All right, here we go. That is a lot of needle swing for this compressed felt, folks. Very, a lot of needle swing. Good Lord, that's a lot of needle swing. And if you didn't see that premiere where I broke a needle sewing this stuff, then you'll know how tough this stuff is. Yeah, at least we ended in the up position. That's a good thing. I could never have done this on the battery. Right now I'm in connected directly to AC to the camera. I could never have run this premiere this long on battery. We would have been toast, totally toast. Okay, so now I'm laying down, what did I say, a straight stitch? Let's lay down a straight stitch next to this. I have to change the daisy wheel thing over to straight stitch from uh, the snaky pattern. There's one. You know what I was going to do a zigzag anyway, right? Yeah. So there's a zigzag setting. I'm going to stop there and we'll do a zigzag next and then we'll do a straight stitch. All my other settings look good, good, good. Long, 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 good. Perfect. Let's go. And I ended in the up position again. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. And we still have not run out of bobbin thread yet. I cannot believe this. Well, yeah, I can, but I'm trying to sound dramatic, so. All right, one stitch to go, one stitch to go. Hey, hey. All right, here goes our straight stitch. I've got to change our stitch width to zero. I also have to change our daisy wheel from zigzag over to straight, which is only one turn. And here we go, our final stitch on uh, Mary Rowan's Fof 300 Known in Dry Sig. Here we go. And of course, I ended in the down position, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, thread back. I cannot believe how much sewing I've done on this bobbin. It's just mind blowing. I think it holds more thread than a class 15, seriously. And you all know how big a class 15 is as far as holding thread. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, let's take a look at this and then we'll uh, wrap this premiere up pretty quick here. All right, that should be pretty good, I think, as far as angle. Pretty good as far as angle. So again, we have three layers of compressed felt here, folks. Not a light task by any stretch of the imagination. And the music ended perfectly. So we did our uh, snaky stitch on top first. I gotta loosen this camera again. Oh, goodness gravy. Uh, there we go. I probably loosened it too much. The camera's gonna be pointing at the ceiling any second now. So our, our snaky stitch on top, our zigzag, our bottom one is the uh, straight stitch. All of those stitches absolutely spot on and because of the density and the weave of this material and the fibers and everything uh, it does have a tendency to try to mask and conceal but you just can't mask stitches that look that good so if we turn it over 
Are we going to get something totally dramatic and crazy and scary and all that? Hopefully not. We're going to see our lock stitch, which is equally spectacular. Equally spectacular. And easily seen because of that fabulous LED light. So top row is our snaky one, our zigzag, and then our bottom stitch is our straight stitch. Absolutely spot on. Absolutely spot on. And this again is our lock stitch. So this is a definite pass as well, this final stitch off that I was going to do. And if I didn't show you by rotating it to the side, take a look at this uh, compressed felt as far as the thickness of it. Can you see that? I've got the wrong angle. I can't see it. Yeah, you can see it. That that If that were the equivalent of leather, that would be about probably six, six, seven ounces of leather. And this compressed felt is just super intense stuff. Like I said, it snapped one of my Schmetz needles, which is unheard of. Absolutely unheard of. I, I, can't, I can count on one hand, I can count on less than a half of a hand, how many times I've broken a Schmetz needle sewing anything. I mean, everything from multiple, multiple layers of super heavy leather to canvas to everything, and I've never broken a needle, and that compressed felt snapped one of my Schmetz needles. So, never underestimate the power of compressed felt, seriously. So, <clears throat> that is what you call engineering perfection, in my opinion. Uh, the FOF 339 encapsulates beauty, grace, power, majesty. It just does. I think that this is the crowning victory for FOF out of any machine that they ever made, quite honestly. Uh, it just it personifies everything that a sewing machine manufacturer would be looking to do, including the absolutely crazy... Uh, bed space as I illustrated even in comparison to a Swedish beauty. It's just mind-blowing How spectacular this machine is so I'm gonna find something spectacular musically to throw on real quick <clears throat> And then we will wrap this up. I'll just come off the tripod get a little bit closer to Mary's machine And then we'll move on from there. So let's see. Oh, I got to play this one This one is called mr. Mr. Lady I'm not making it up. All right, let's come up the tripod and get closer to this spectacular fall. Three, three, nine. Here we go. That was my finger. <laughs> Look at that bed space. And if you haven't checked out the Facebook photos, even if you don't do Facebook, you got to check them out. Because then you can see the inside mechanics and the engineering of this uh, incredible 339. You really need to check those out. This is not just another pretty face. This is a machine that is engineered to do the heaviest, the heaviest of sewing. And basically laugh at that material. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. So I hope you've enjoyed this premiere that we persevered to get. Uh, I'll turn this down a little bit. I hope you enjoyed this premiere that we really persevered to get. Uh, the first premiere, again, the file was corrupted. 
And uh, we had to redo this premiere, uh, which I was determined to accomplish uh, because uh, Mary was uh, such a trooper in saying, you know, I'm, I'm more concerned about you, Scott, than I am about the premiere, so don't push yourself too hard. But it would be an injustice not to capture how spectacular uh, this uh, Fall 339 is in sewing action, not just in still shots. And I know from the response that you guys love seeing those still shots of, uh, of Mary's uh, 339. And I'm actually gonna be posting some additional shots, uh, not of this machine, but of another machine also that's gonna be up and coming towards the premiere pretty quick. Uh, a machine called Ebony that belongs to a wonderful lady out of Florida. So keep watch for that as well. Mr. Bean, all is forgiven. Uh, you did a fabulous job, and I liked your off-camera explanation, by the way. I liked your off-camera explanation of saying you put out that 229 as well. Yes, by accident, but it, it highlighted the point of just how plain those machines were at that time uh, as far as their look, and then you get an absolute museum quality masterpiece like this that Foff came out with after that 229. That's about as good as it gets, folks. And here, Obermeister, thank you for joining us as well. Well, God bless you guys. Stay tuned for other great premieres like this where you'll see masterpieces of sewing engineering mastery after it's been underneath my scalpel and gone through my restoration process. So, Again, if you see a machine go up for sale and it catches your fancy, do not wait. Like the people in all of those countries that I named and other states in the U.S., jump at it just as Mary did with this FOF 339 that's going to be heading out to the great state of Kentucky in just probably about 48 hours, which isn't soon enough. Mary's probably saying, drive it here, Scott, and I'll buy you lunch. All right, that's a deal. All right, take care, folks, and remember... You're never old. Not even you, Herr Meister. You're never old until regrets take the place of your dreams. So don't let that happen. Hang on to your dreams and take action on them. Right, Mr. Bean? I think he's nodding yes. I can't tell. All right, take care, folks. And thanks for persevering to catch this second attempt at doing a premiere on Mary's amazing FOF 339. Take care.